Hey everybody, this is my 40 gallon native tank and today we're going to do a simple before and after. I want to get the glass cleaned up and do a simple water change and I also want to add some leaves to this tank. I did have a bunch of uh, autumn leaves when I set the tank up. The stream where I collected a lot of the rocks and the woodwork and stuff had a lot of fallen leaves in it and I incorporated them into the tank and they looked great. They provided cover for the fish and they provide food for the crayfish. The crayfish will actually eat those leaves and they're pretty much all gone. You can see down here on the bottom left, I've got a few little chunks of remnants of leaves and there's probably some stems and little sticks in the back. If you look closely in the corner there, the little darter just darted, but the sculpin is still sitting on that piece of wood back there. We'll talk about that more on the other side of this video, but I did want to uh, add some more leaves back into the tank. I also would like to add some more sticks into the tank, but the sticks are probably going to have to wait. It's a little bit on the chilly side for me to be out grubbing around in the stream, but I do have an idea. So give me a minute uh, and we'll see what we can do about getting some leaves here in the tank. I've still got this sitting out here from this summer. This used to be the tank that was in my living room, but it's got a crack in the bottom and it leaks. You'll notice that there's moisture all around the base of it and it's only half full. Uh, the more water you put in it, the faster it leaks. And when it gets down to just a couple of inches, the leak kind of stops. And so it's just been sitting out here since the summertime. And it's actually got quite a good sized chunk of ice on it, which shows exactly why I didn't feel like making my way down to the stream today. But it's also got lots of leaves in here. Uh, these even look like oak leaves. I'm not really good at identifying trees and leaves and stuff, but they look like oak uh, leaves. And if I'm not mistaken, oak leaves are one of the leaves that are always recommended uh, to put in your tanks as far as not really altering your pH too much. And that sort of thing. So, got all the leaves I need right here. They're probably not as colorful as I would have liked. Uh, I can maybe walk around the yard a little bit and see what's going on. Probably got some colorful leaves around here somewhere. But let me get a handful of them together and we'll go back inside and we will see what's going on with the fish tank. Maybe I'll bring this one in. All right, everybody, see you back inside. All right, and now before it gets refilled, I just want to show everybody this just as a little bit of whimsy and fun. I just brought in a big old chunk of ice and threw it in there. I'm hoping that by the time the tank fills up, the ice will still be intact, although I really seriously doubt it. It's melting very fast, which is why I wanted to get a little bit of it on video now. So if you're wondering why I just put ice in my fish tank, even though I'm putting fairly warm water back into it as I refill it, we will discuss that once we get up to the finished product and we can talk about what a cold water fish really means. So sit tight, let me get it filled up and we'll see the before and after. So here's your before. And there's your after. So as far as the ice being in the tank, that was more or less just a little bit of whimsy while I was doing the water change and I was outside breaking up the ice to get to the leaves anyway. I just thought it would be fun to make the tank look a little more natural for this time of year and put a few chunks of ice floating around in there with some leaves stuck in it. And of course they were long gone before the tank was even done filling up and that didn't affect the fish in any way. But I did want to take a moment to talk about cold water fish. Every fish in this tank, even the crayfish, were caught here locally and therefore unlike my other pseudo native tank, my new world tank, which does have a couple of fish in it that are tropical and do need that warm water, this tank doesn't have any fish in it that really need warm water. I know when people think of cold water fish they often think of fish that need to be in cold water and there are a few species that do need to be in cold water. Most cold water fish, however, can be in cold water. Think of goldfish and carp. They do just fine in 90 degree ponds in the summertime, but they also survive just fine under the ice in the winter. And in my experience, they can undergo pretty rapid shifts in temperature without any uh, real problems. Back in the day, I had this tank set up with a bunch of 
uh, sunfish and some smallmouth bass or maybe some largemouth bass. I don't know. It's been a lot of years since I had it done. But when I would do water changes, I would do massive water changes like 75%. And I would just run cold water back into the tank without using any hot. And the tank would be so cold by the time it was done filling up, I would actually get condensation building up on the glass on the outside. It would sweat. The water would be so cold in there, and then the humidity from here in the basement would condense. And the fish never batted an eyelash. I never had any weird illnesses or lethargic fish or anything like that. And within a few hours, the tank had warmed back up to room temperature, and all the fish were fine. So cold water fish are just fish most of the time that can withstand cold water. It doesn't necessarily mean they have to be in cold water. So for me to put a little bit of ice in this tank no big deal at all even if i had just thrown the ice in there like this and let it melt uh it would have only changed the water temperature a couple of degrees at the most the absolute most that little bit of ice would have changed you know this is 40 gallons of water uh it takes a lot of energy to to shift that so that little bit of ice even if i had thrown it in the tank just like this uh, honestly wouldn't even have affected tropical fish so putting it in there while i was filling the tank uh, and I did bump up the warm water, as I said, so it was, you know, uh, pretty much nulled it out as it filled the tank back up. Anyway, moving on. The other thing you may have noticed is the new woodwork that I decided a few minutes ago I was going to run out in the yard and grab. I was going to throw it in the tank and let it float, but I decided that I really like the way it looks sort of above the water. I'm really a big fan of lichen. I just think lichen is some really, really neat looking stuff. Um, moderately fascinated by its life cycle and the way it seems to just survive forever and in any conditions. But mostly I just like the way it looks. I think it's really cool looking stuff. And I went out to my burning pile and I grabbed a few pieces of wood that were just lying right on top. And these have multiple species of lichen growing on them this one's got a few neat pieces that have a lot of really good texture on them but this is the best chunk on there anywhere so i just thought it was cool looking i like this little almost sunburst pattern you've got up here going on on that one and then of course when you really look at it closely you can see all the different species and the algae and the moss and the green and the brown and the gray and there's all sorts of color all sorts of stuff going on there when you really actually pay a little bit of attention to it so i think it looks great part of this tank's appeal to me is the very natural look of it i was actually kind of laughing to myself today uh, I thought about uh, throwing an old beer can or an old soda bottle or something in there and letting it sink. And that would probably look a little more natural to what I'm used to seeing because I don't go anywhere around here. It doesn't matter how pristine the area may look. I always see some sign of human activity. There's always an old tire somewhere or a soda bottle or a beer can uh, or something in the water. And I just got a little chuckle out of the idea of making this tank look authentic and putting up some trash in there or something like that. Of course, I'm not going to, or maybe I will as a gag one day. Who knows? We'll see. But other than that, I uh, just did a fairly significant water change, probably 60%, I would say. And I just threw the big old handful of leaves in there. They probably had some duckweed attached to them. I tried to avoid getting any of the other um, plants that were growing out in that uh, tank out in the yard. My regular viewers will remember uh, that is just a bunch of stuff I brought home from the reservoir. And it's just been sitting out there. So it's all kinds of weird uh, stuff that wouldn't grow well in this tank anyway with the crayfish. So I did my best to leave that behind. But I did grab a bunch of handful of leaves and i brought them in and you can see i've sort of strategically placed them around the tank that may look very sort of natural and dispersed but i actually took quite a while to place them all there just for the visual appeal i even flipped a few upside down just to give us a little bit more idea of the texture and the color patterns and all that good stuff uh, of course by the time we see this an hour or two from now the crayfish will have completely remodeled the tank but that's not the point. The point was having fun while I was doing it and making it look nice for the video here. So again, next time you see it, that's probably all going to be shifted around and chewed up and the leaves are going to be moved and the sticks piled up and everything else. 
So we'll probably find some more branches or sticks out in the yard. Who knows? Maybe we'll have a nice uh, day coming up soon, and I will be able to get some more woodwork from down the stream, or maybe I'll just put on my uh, waders or whatever and just brave the cold temperatures, and we'll go out and get some more woodwork for the tank soon anyway. In the meantime, I'm really digging my lichen-covered pieces of wood that we're going to leave up top for now. And yes, while I'm thinking about it, um, this does give the crayfish an avenue of escape. If they're really into it, they can climb the wood, they can climb across this piece of wood, you know, and then climb all the way down to this end and get out. Or they can climb, you know, up here and down onto this piece and climb all the way over to this corner and get out. The likelihood of them doing that is probably pretty slim, so I'm not going to worry too much about that, but we'll see. You never know, and if they do, then it will certainly prove my point about how much of an escape artist crayfish are. So there you go, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you're subscribed. You never know what you're going to get with me. Don't forget this one here is my native tank. Thanks again, and I will see you real soon on the next one.